Greetings, young scientists. Today we're going to be talking about how heat transfers within a liquid. First off, let's talk about what we see in front of us. We have a glass beaker. It is filled with water. It is sitting on a hot plate. With all things heat transfer, we talk about how heat is transferred. The coldest does not transfer. It is heat transfer, not cold transfer. I was talking about heat energy, thermal energy, moving or transferring to something else or throughout something. So um, this is sitting on a hot plate. The great thing you see at the bottom is the heat source. We always talk about what the heat source is and what is uh, it is transferring to. So the heat source is the hot plate. The beaker is sitting on it and it is heating the bottom of that beaker um, through conduction because it is touching. But our question isn't about that. Our question is about how is heat transferring throughout a liquid? So let's start looking at this. We have this beaker and the beaker is being heated is the bottom of the water the same temperature as the top of the water? As you're seeing with the thermometer, you're seeing that the bottom is about 136 degrees Fahrenheit and the top is 121 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is a discrepancy there. There is a difference. Um, this is all before the water is boiled. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's observe red food coloring being added to a beaker of boiling hot water. Be sure to take note of how the red moves throughout the water. Now let's watch it again in slow motion. As you squeeze the bulb of the pipette, it releases the red into the water. We see that the red rises up on the left hand side, gets to the top, and then sinks back down on the right hand side. This shows us a convection cell where hot water will rise up the cold water will sink down. We saw how fast the red circulated throughout the water, rising up as it was heated, cooling, and coming back down. It's the same way the water always moves within a container as it's being boiled. Just like when you're making macaroni and cheese, the, the, the noodles are moving because of that motion of the heated water. Now, the question I have is, it does that in heated water, what happens in cold water? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a beaker of ice water, we're gonna stick a little bit of red in there, we're gonna see how fast that water circulates that red around it. What do you think will happen? Make a prediction as to what you think is gonna happen as we add the red food coloring into the ice water. Pause this video and write it down. We'll see if you're right. Here goes the red. It's not moving a whole lot here. When we put it in hot water, it was mere seconds before it completely circulated throughout the whole beaker. We put about the same amount of red and about a quarter of the amount of liquid. This is a smaller beaker and less water being in it. It's not moving a whole lot. Let's speed this up and see if we can see what happens. Even taking two more minutes of this video, the red really doesn't move much further than this. A little bit on top, a lot in the bottom, but it's not having that cycle that we saw in the other one. Why do you think that is? One of the things that we do know is that most things move more when they are warm. So warm water, the particles inside of warm water are moving at a more rapid rate. They're moving faster around inside of that water. That's why the red moves a whole lot faster within the hot water. And it's a lot slower in the cold water. That's what we need to keep thinking about. As we're looking at this today, we remember, as we look about heat transfer, not cold transfer, we have to identify what our heat source is and where the heat is transferring to. We also need to think about what kind of material we have. Is it going through a solid? Is it going through a liquid? Or is it going through a gas? Within the hot water, our heat is transferred in with convection to make sure that that, that water is circulating and causing the whole thing to be hot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. And don't forget, we do science well.